Welcome to the Leadership Corner. My name is Key Lu, and I am the Executive Director for the Disaster Resilience Leadership Academy at Tulane University. The Leadership Corner is a forum where leaders from the non-government organizations, United Nations, local and national authorities can come together to share their insights and motivations to provide support to people and communities affected by natural and man-made disasters. The following is an interview with one of my personal heroes, Margareta Wallstrom. Margareta is currently the United Nations Assistant Secretary General for Disaster Risk Reduction, the first person ever to hold this post. She has had a distinguished career spanning over 30 years with the International Federation of the Red Cross as well as the United Nations. I hope you enjoy the following interview. Uh, I will start off by saying, Margareta, welcome to the Leadership Corner. Thank you. You have um, had a very distinguished career uh, with uh, over 30 years of experience in national and international disaster operations. You are currently the UN Secretary General's Special Representative for Disaster Risk Reduction. What keeps you going? What keeps you motivated to stay engaged in this field? Mm. You know, one thing that really keeps me motivated is that uh, there is an impact of the work that we do. Uh, of course, when you do disaster operations, um, it's uh, the immediacy, uh, it's the meeting with people, it's seeing how organizations and people you know, build insights and capacity. In spite of the many tragedies that, of course, you meet as well, there is a, a positive element of being involved in something that is so close to people's lives. Mm -hmm. And, um, you know, the downside of it, and that's what keeps us going as well, I think, is that you actually see the same things being repeated over and over again. And you see disasters happening in the same place, the same bridges going down, the same houses being destroyed. So that sense of um, that we are not really using what we learn very well to reduce the impact and, and prevent a little bit more than we are in the habit of doing is now what mot motivates me to uh, really try to explore how we can, in the international setting, um, help um, bring the agenda to that part of what is in our power to do, which is to demonstrate that you can reduce impact, that you can know a lot more about the way disasters impact communities, uh, that you can plan for something that you know, maybe for decades and centuries have been perceived to be uh, unplannable. There is a pattern to how disasters happen and we understand that a lot more now and in the United States you certainly know that since uh, decades also with your floods risk management program. So that's the agenda we now want to bring and it, it's also a particularly um, interesting type of working. Why? Because even countries that are not very rich or even poor countries and communities can do things. Mm -hmm. Uh, once you lead the conversation and the demonstration of what has been done by other communities and countries, you, you have a very encouraging conversation of cross-learning, um, of bringing innovation and creativity to bear on very serious issues in terms of the cost of lives and, and, and financial and economic impact on countries. Mm -hmm. It's interesting that you, you, you point out some of the frustrations uh, that there are recurring, I mean, one only needs to take a look at our four mm -hmm. um, to see that things are not perhaps getting better. Uh, in your um, experiences here, what, can you highlight uh, a, a response um, that has been successful, one that perhaps students who uh, want to take a look at closer examination can learn from uh, these lessons? Mm -hmm. I think we are in a particularly interesting period now where there seems to be a renewed interest in actually changing things. May I think because of the combined impact of the tsunami and the climate risk realization. Um, so in terms of um, having seen within a time frame that is really meaningful, um, I think the tsunami has had a lot of positive after effects. 
um, in um, all the most tsunami affected countries uh, in uh, the Asia region, mm -hmm. but also in fact in countries far away at the other part of the world where many visitors, tourists from these countries were killed in the tsunami. Mm -hmm. Also there you can see that governments have put in place better crisis management system, uh, better awareness of how a crisis even far away can affect the country. So the citizens sense of that they, uh, they are now part of a more of a system more uh, able to deal with the security and safety should be there. In the most disaster affected countries, I think what you would see is um, more community awareness, certainly better early warning systems since that became a real uh, key issue. Uh, now early warning systems is not only it's, uh, about technology, it's also about social organization, it's about awareness, training, preparedness. So, even though the systems are by any means not perfected yet, but they're certainly much better. And in several of these countries, um, the, the work on the continued work on strengthening the preparedness and response system and the risk reduction and prevention system is moving ahead extremely well. It is very interesting to see how that capacity for making you know, learning there on the future is really coming to bear. So I think that's a good example. Um, the example in today's situation maybe students want to look at is uh, how is the understanding of, of the climate and weather risk actually impacting uh, the work of countries that are not as disaster prone as, for example, the countries in Southeast Asia, because that's really the next uh, major step. And the third thing is um, maybe the most frightening of disasters that we know, major earthquakes mm -hmm. uh, that are you know, not immediately related necessarily to climate change. But um, And when you look at the overall statistics of disasters, what they cost over a period of time, in fact, the, even the major earthquakes that we suffer are blips on the curve of increasing economic cost of disasters. But they are, in a way, they are the symbol of disasters because they're extremely deadly and because we haven't really got a sense of that we've mitigated the potential impact. Uh, but here also, um, look at what the state of the current state of not only earthquake science but in fact also preparedness and management of major earthquakes. I think it's very important. It's something that we are also looking at. And, and therefore we are particularly emphasizing this campaign for safer schools and hospitals. Mm -hmm. Because they are public institutions, they are extremely important. And, and in any earthquake, that's what really upsets us all as individuals, is to see schools and hospitals collapsing with patients, students, teachers in them. Mm -hmm. And we can change that, and many countries are already going after that agenda in a very impressive manner.